Hi everyone and good afternoon. Today we are on the cruise ship and a bit of a special cruise ship. We're on the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. Uh, they, they just runs two night cruises from West Palm Beach. It's a very different cruise line. You know, we've been on a lot of cruise ships and uh, this one, it, it's different than a lot of them. It is. Uh, much less expensive, much older. In this video here, we're gonna show you off everything the Margaritaville at Sea has to offer from the food and the restaurants to the bars and the drinks, all the activities and more. Mm -hmm. I go by the legend, jump by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. And uh, we're starting up here on the pool deck. Obviously you can tell it's a bit of an older, smaller pool deck. You do have one main pool right there, some lounges around. I do like the Margaritaville umbrellas. Mm -hmm. um, they did a big sail away party yesterday along with a, uh, a couple of different games and there was live music at the pool for a while. Mm -hmm. You just hang out and play cornhole if you want to. If you go one deck above, it is kind of like the jogging track, which is all in this astroturf. I think the best seats by the pool are underneath this weird runway thing. Yeah, no, those are comfortable. Yeah, look at those couches. And you're in the shade. Yes. And there is the pool. All righty, let's go check out the rest of the ship. As you would expect right next to the pool deck is a bar, the License to Chill bar. This is also the smoking area, so it's not a bar that I would frequent for me as a non-smoker. Right now we're in the back of the ship on deck 11, which is home to the other pool. Now this is an adults only pool. Mm -hmm. Now on our sailing there have not been many kids, so I don't think having an adults only pool is a big deal. But maybe on some sailings it is. There's also a lot of loungers back here. The 12 volt bar. And then if I turn around, two hot tubs. Two tiny hot tubs. Yes, <laughs> they're supposed to hold uh, four people. There were definitely more than that last night. Yes. One nice thing, these pools and hot tubs back here, they stay open till midnight. We are currently at the highest point of the ship, deck 14, which is home to the Hemisphere nightclub. Also, uh, not often you see nightclubs with a air hockey table, a small air hockey table in it. No. A couple things with this, it is open at all hours. They do have TVs that'll play some of the sports that are on. This, this lounge has some of the best air conditioning on the entire ship. Yes. So if there is a game on that you want to see and um, you don't need to be attached to a bar, it's a very good place to do so because the audio is on for the games and man, it's nice and cool in it here. It is very cool in here. Some places on the ship get really hot. Indeed. Uh, we did make it to the nightclub last night mm -hmm. and it was pretty popular. It was. A wide range of music. Mm -hmm. I heard Missy Elliott, I heard Miley Cyrus, I heard songs that I didn't know what they were. Yeah, I was like, I think late 1990s to about mid 2000s, I believe. And then some more modern stuff as well in yeah. there. Uh, there's also a pool table over here. I don't think it is working, but uh, that's a pretty cool spot on the ship. Also, um, if you're just sailing and you're at sea, when the wear times the ship's at sea, you can hang out here and get some pretty cool views. One thing to note with the nightclub, and a lot of times you think nightclub, you think drinking. It's all the way up here on deck 14. Uh, you can take the elevator, or you can take these very, very steep round stairs. On deck five, you have the atrium area, or the lobby. The uh, coolest part about the lobby is this giant flip-flop sculpture, complete with the pop top, and the birds. Now, on some cruise ships, the, the lobby or the atrium is a hub of activity, not on this one. It's home to guest services, the shore excursions desk, an ATM, and some couches. Now, it will be quieter here than on a lot of the ships, so if you want to have like a quiet conversation, this might be a good place to do so. Also has the wonderful Adirondack chairs. All right, so right now we are on deck eight in the middle of the ship at an area where you'll probably spend a lot of time. This yeah. is the Euphoria Lounge, one of their main entertainment venues on the ship. In the afternoon, there might be some trivia and games in here. In the evening, there's music. There was the Quest Adult Game Show in here last night. Um, right now we're in port, it's about 10 in the morning. We have a nice big cocktail and they're just playing a Jimmy Buffett concert video, much like if you went to a Margaritaville restaurant. Yeah, it's very similar to that. Yep, which you would expect. I would expect like Margarita restaurant stuff. We are drinking the Watermelon Wave cocktail. It's actually really, really it, good. It is really good. I normally don't do like watermelon style cocktails, but it's pretty solid. They do also have TVs behind the bar. We got a uh, college game day on over here with Pat McAfee. And then they got the Yes Network, which is interesting. I can't get the Yes Network at home, and I'm a big fan <laughs> of the New York Yankees. But I come on a cruise ship to the Bahamas, and they have the Yes Network on there. And this is the biggest bar on board. Yes. They have a lot of bartenders here at night. Yep. And uh, uh, wait, roaming waiters. On deck nine, you'll find the Margaritaville Casino. 
Um, this was very busy during most of our voyage. I'm sad this never worked the whole time. The sports betting kiosk. Um, you'll find a decent amount of slot machines and uh, tables in here. Good to know, um, every night of the voyage from 6 till 8, there is a happy hour in here with $5 tables and $5 beers. So that's a, a pretty solid deal on this cruise ship. There is one video poker machine. It is over there. And that's my game of choice. So uh, that is uh, important for me to know. Also, if you sign up for their player's card, you get $10 in free play. So probably do that. It does take about 10 minutes or so. On decks eight and nine in the front of the ship, you'll find the Stars on the Water Theater and Bar. Now there's a small bar outside of the theater, but really the main draw, this is the main show theater on board the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. Um, not the biggest theater you'll find on a cruise ship, but I did actually really enjoy the shows. On the first night of our cruise, they actually did both production shows. So there was one, I think, at 7.30 and one at 9.30, and they were different shows. The first one was Caribbean Heat, a big singing and dancing show. And uh, this was pretty solid. I actually think this was the probably the better of the two shows, but they're pretty similar. Um, if you can only go to one or the other, you're really not missing much. Um, I did like the Caribbean Heat. There's a segment where they did they sang, Who Let's the Dogs Out? And the background screen, they have this great LED screen. It's just playing all sorts of wonderful dog pictures. Uh, one thing I liked about the shows, they brought in the musicians from the ship. So some songs would have the steel drum guy. Some songs would have a full band. I thought that was cool. I also liked the shows because they involved aerialists and acrobats instead of just singers and dancers. Now, Caribbean Heat was just all about the music of the islands. The second show was Radio Margaritaville. And uh, while you might think this is going to be like an all Jimmy Buffett show, it really isn't. It's a lot of kind of like random music where they'll do, okay, here's like a Spanish music section. Here's a country music section. And of course, they do end with a Jimmy Buffett music section. But both the shows I thought on night one were pretty solid. On night two, uh, they did a love and marriage show and they had a magician comedian in there as well. But yeah, the, the shows were better than I thought they would be on the Margaritaville at Sea. Let's talk about dinner on the Margaritaville at Sea. The main dining room is called Finn's. It's located on deck eight in the back of the ship. And I'm going to voice over this segment as I had a little too much rum on the island and wasn't making much sense when I listened back. The dining room is very basic, um, very bright, very open. We did have the earlier dining time. You could eat at 545 or 745. Now you get your dining time when you, as soon as you check in, there's going to be a big area in the terminal. If you go to the dining one, that's where you can tell them, hey, I want 545 or hey, I want 745. Let's take a look at the menu of the food items. And here you can see all the starters, ahi tuna, chicken tortilla soup, spring rolls, uh, shrimp and grits, a signature pasta, barbecue pork chop, pineapple glazed chicken, Tuscan mac and cheese. And then you got some stuff you got to pay extra for with the steak or the lobster tails. And then encore is the dessert selection. Uh, here is our appetizers. Molly got the ahi tuna as well as a Caesar salad. And I opted for the spring rolls. Spring rolls are actually very tasty. They had a good sauce that went with it as well. Um, I thought the appetizers were pretty good on both nights of the sailing. And look up there, I also got a chicken tortilla soup. I love dipping my bread in some soup. Uh, for the main course, Molly got that Tuscan mac and cheese. And I went for the barbecue pork. Uh, this was not a great dish. It was very, very dry. Uh, I, I would not recommend the barbecue pork. And coming up last, we will have our desserts for the evening. That brownie was good, man. Brownie, giant scoop of ice cream on top. That was very, very tasty. And I got the baked Florida. They're taped on a baked Alaskan. Dessert's pretty solid. On the top deck, all the way in the front of the ship, you will find a pickleball court. That's unique. Yeah, it's very different, very popular right now. It is. But there are no paddles or balls. Do you have a certain time to play, like a competition? I'm yeah. I'm not sure if you can only play during the competition. I don't know. I guess if you're a big pickleball person and you're watching this, bring your own stuff. Because it does look like a nice place to play. It is all knitted in, and you get a cool view right in the front of the ship. But uh, who brings their own pickleball stuff with them? Quick update on that pickleball stuff. You can rent them. They're available at the towel station on deck 11. I think one of my favorite places to relax on the ship is on the top deck right by the pickleball court. You do have these Adirondack chairs that look out facing the outdoors. There's normally a nice breeze up here. It was really relaxing. And I think the ship does the signage really well. I agree. And also um, a lot of places on the ship are very warm. Here you're in the shade with a breeze 
in a nice chair. You can enjoy a frozen drink and cool off. The Margarita Villa at Sea only does two night cruises and only comes here to Freeport on Grand Bahama Island, which is kind of nobody's favorite port in the Bahamas. Yeah. Um, they do have a little marketplace, but it's not super convenient to get there from the Margarita Villa at Sea. You kind of have to walk that way. You have to walk across the parking lot. Yeah, to get over towards, you know, there's a Fat Tuesdays, Senor Frogs, Harley Davidson store, and some other things over there. Uh, if you want to go to the beach, you do have to take a cab or book an excursion. We are now in the spa area. I do like some of those loungers over there that look out onto the ocean. The spa is also where you find the fitness center. Fitness center actually looks really nice. It does. Got all these fancy treadmills with giant TVs on them. Same with the rowing machines and the bikes. Definitely a smaller gym. It is. But it's a really nice gym. Yeah, I, I think if you're doing the weights, it might be a little bit rougher. But like, look at the size of the TV on that treadmill. This is also attached to the spa area and there is a salon up here as well. I believe there are a couple sauna type things that you gotta pay more for a thermal suite pass. But uh, I'm impressed with the treadmills. Yeah. Deck nine in the back of the ship, you have keys on the water. This is a multi-purpose venue. You have karaoke here. You also have dueling pianos. On deck 10, there is the buffet and the cheeseburger in Paradise Bar. The buffet is kind of a small area. You have the water, lemonade, iced tea. You also have fresh food, fruits here. Now we're here at dinner at the buffet. You have beef stroganoff, pork tenderloin, butter chicken, stuffed cabbage grilled fish. You also have a soup, which is a beef uh, stroganoff here. And then you have great water, rice, mixed vegetables, big penne pasta, and roast potatoes here at the buffet. In the second half of the buffet, you have the hot dog section, you also have the barbecue and baked beans and a curry station, which is roast beef here. On the right side of the buffet, you do have the pasta shape station that has three pre-mixed pasta. Also in the middle of the buffet, you have your bratwurst, your hot dogs, you have some meatballs here. And then you have some toppings, like bell peppers, onions and mushrooms, and some sauce. On the left side of the buffet, you have me station with pre-made sandwiches. You also have some desserts here. You have the fruit jello, coffee cake, and strawberry cake here. Included with your cruise, you have water, lemonade, iced tea. In the morning, you do have a juice. You also have hot water, coffee, and decaf coffee, as well as a selection of teas. Bay area. It is quite little seating, so it is quite squished. If you go all the way to the back, though, in the fire clock somewhere bar, you do find more seating. It is a little hot in the buffet area. In the back of the buffet, you have the fire clock somewhere bar, as well as the burger bar. The five o'clock bar is really well themed. It has a giant margarita mixer. You have lime lights. And then you have your bar as well as uh, your burger bar. Right next to the Euphoria Lounge, you do have the library on board. Uh, some pretty nice tables here if you want to play like dominoes or cards. 
giant Jenga. There are a couple games available in these cabinets, which uh, we're in the morning right now. It's about 10.30 and these are the cabinets are all locked up. Mm -hmm. These are interesting chairs as well. Now, in the library, there's also books, about 12 books. We're trying to leave a 13th book, but unfortunately, these things... They're locked. They're locked. On deck eight in the back of the ship, you get the JWB Prime Steakhouse, which is the main upcharge restaurant on the ship. It's actually just part of the main dining room. They put like a curtain up over. And this is open for breakfast and it's open for dinner. Uh, check out some of the menu here. I believe for breakfast it's $35, but includes like sparkling wines, mm -hmm. which probably be a fun time. For dinner it's more like, I think it's around $55. So uh, quite pricey. Not something we're going to spend the extra money for on this cruise, but if you want to celebrate a special occasion or maybe you ate at the main dining room on day one and you didn't like it, you want to do something fancier for day two, you could give this a whirl. But I had 55 bucks, that's, that's a lot. That's that is a lot. lot. On deck eight you'll find the Fin City Arcade. Actually, for a cruise ship of its age, it's a pretty nice arcade. It is. Check out all the games in here. You got Big Buck World, Papa Shot Basketball. Now, these games, they all cost money. None of them are free, and they all range in prices. And I would say the prices are actually more reasonable than on most cruise ship arcades. Yeah, there's a couple games that you're like, that's a little high. But yeah, like Papa Shot for a dollar. really good for a dollar. The big Jurassic Park game, these are always fun. Anything in the, the big giant cabinets. I'm sad this is broken because uh, that looks like it'll probably be really fun. Yeah. Like a shuffle puck kind of game. There are a couple of broken games in here. Do you have one where you can win some high value prize stuff? Injustice Arcade is $1.50. Pac-Man, it looks like you can play all sorts of retro games in here. There's Galaga as well. That one's a dollar. They do have as many games as they can fit in this little hallway. Yes, unfortunately a bunch of them don't work. Yes. This photo thing doesn't work. Uh, the Walking Dead is functioning. I do like this. You can play this prize locker game and win yourself a Margaritaville at Sea hat. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, when you're talking about games that are a little bit more on the expensive side, the Plucky Ducky for $2, that's a little bit on the pricier side. This looks pretty cool. I've never seen this one before. Zombie Land with VR goggles. That looks pretty cool. It's $4. It's $4. And I'm also like, oh man, would this game not work for $4? Uh, Alien Armageddon is $1. Fast and the Furious is broken. You can win yourself a plushy Toad. Everyone loves Toad. I do love Toad. He's my character I play. I'm, I'm a Wario guy. And then you could play Ski Ball for a dollar. On deck nine, you have some shops here. You have your photo shops over here. And then you have your liquor shop on your right hand side. Duty free stuff. Duty free. Hats. And two bags. Lip flops. Cool, really cool stuff. Pigs. Yeah. Yeah. Pigs and sharks and alligators. Also on deck nine, midship, you have your coffee shop. You also have gelato. Now this is additional cost, not included. You do also have some beers and sodas here. At the coffee shop, you also have some desserts. On the right side, you have Frank's and Lua's Pizzeria. And this is an upcharge restaurant here. But the pizza smells amazing. Absolutely amazing. The pizza costs about $9 to eat here. So on deck nine, you have a few more shops here. You have jewelry. You have some towels. In jewelry. Really nice. The towels are very, very nice. You have some shirts, some sh uh, necklaces. Yeah, the hoodies. Yeah. Those are really nice. On the left side, on deck nine, you have Live Life Like a Song. This is more your Margaritaville shop here. 
You have your shirts, your cops. Very nice merchandise here. Very much like the store on the, uh, the, the, the restaurants. Yes, very much. Like other cruise line uh, stores and merchandise. I really like this uh, surfboard up over here. We have some signs, some koozies, your clock that says five o'clock somewhere, more jersey shirts over here. You also have really nice uh, keychains. And what we will buy you have the ship ornament over here. We collect these on any cruise that we've been on. So much like a shop, you have services, which are really, really nice over here. You have more towels. You have shirts. You have a lot of different shirts for Margarita at sea. Ooh. Just like the margarita stores. Those are me shirts. Those are you shirts. Like both of these are both you shirts. That is true. And then you have uh, kids toys. Right by the main pool area. First off, there's just a table with giant Jenga sitting there. If you want to play that with your buddies, you could do that. And it's also where you would find the Jolly Mong Kids Club. Now you can see the Kids Club hours listed there. And this is one thing where, uh, you know, Margaritaville at Sea is different than some other lines. The Kids Club, I, I know at least in that late version, is an upcharge. If you want to put your kids in the Kids Club, it is going to cost you some money. Not sure the cost on that one, because we don't have kids and didn't research that much. Right outside of the casino, there are some other arcade games including bonus hole that that game just sounds dirty it does a couple games where you can win money and then there's a couple games where you can win plushies makes sense on the margarita vault see they got parrots everywhere that you can win a plushie parrot money money pokemon to win an angry lion thing what i have no idea what those are no that one's mean on deck eight, down the hall from the Euphoria Lounge, you've got the Parakeets Kids Club. These only run certain hours. I like how they're wearing hats. Yeah, the sign's really fun. I do find it interesting that the Margaritaville Sea does have its own conference center, so you could host like events on this cruise ship. Maybe right by the main lobby and guest services is a small chapel. Very small. On deck 10, right outside of the buffet, you can find the teen club. We were in stateroom cabin 4099, an interior cabin. I would say a pretty good amount of room. Yeah, it's pretty big. A very islandy feel here with the Margaritaville theme. Uh, the bed was not, I really like the linens. Yeah. Uh, the bed was just somewhat comfortable. The, uh, the desk or vanity, this thing definitely seems like it has fallen off before, and it's very shaky. There is a mini fridge down there. Lots and lots of storage. Lots of storage. Like, especially for a two-day cruise, you won't need that much room. Uh, the shower is very small. But they do have both shampoo and conditioner, which Molly tells me is a rarity on ships. And even the, the bathroom does feel tropical. A pretty good amount of room near the sink area. And now the terrifying toilet noise. And that'll do it for our time on board the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise cruise ship. Let's talk about some of the costs. When we booked this cruise, it was about the cabin cost was about $75 per person. Then, like all cruise ships do, they add in the, uh, the port fees and the taxes. That was about $100 per person. Also, like most cruise ships do, there was a uh, daily gratuity that you pay. That's around $14, $15. Now, a couple of things that they do at the Margaritaville that a lot of other cruise lines don't do 
is it's only valet parking at the port, and that is $57 for the cruise. And I, I don't really like that. I, I don't like valet parking, especially like you have to wait in line to get off the ship. You got to wait in line for customs, and then you have to wait in line once again for your valet. And also one thing no other cruise line does, and I know people refer to like some of these fees as like scummy, and I really don't feel like they are, except for this one here. They charge $12 per person per day for a fuel surcharge. And th yeah. this is kind of bogus here. Like no other cruise line does this. Everything else I can see, okay, you know, that's what the cruise lines do. Nobody charges you a, a $24 fuel surcharge per guest. Like, that's bogus. Also, yeah. you're not even going very far. No, just put that in fees. Yeah, and um, it's also like, hey, it does, no matter how busy or slow the sailing is, it's still $24. Just showing you it's a load of hooey. All right, so what are some of your favorite parts and least favorite parts of the Margaritaville cruise ship? Um, well, the price. You can't beat the price. Mm -hmm. A lot uh, of hidden fees, but I mean, it's $75. Yes, uh, and it's one of the only cruise ships that do two nights always. It's always a two night cruise. Now you'll find, you know, MSC or celebrity here and there. Do a repositioning kind of thing. Yeah, but it's very rare. Now with the uh, Margaritaville, you can always go on a two night getaway. So it's always available no matter what day you're available. Well, every other day, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, I really like the state shows. I thought both state shows they did were pretty high quality stuff. Um, I love that the, they had the acrobats and the aerialist, the big LED screen behind them. I thought it was a, for again, when you're paying for this value cruise, I thought that was a uh, better show than I was expecting them to have. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed how friendly the crew staff was. The yes. The crew was very, very friendly, very outgoing, learned our names. Yeah, I mean, I, I even found like they were more friendly than other cruise lines as well. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's just that Margaritaville environment. Mm -hmm. uh, some stuff I liked. I liked that there was a... One of the things I was not expecting was all the made-to-order stations in the buffet area. In the morning, there was omelets. And for lunch and dinner, there was panini or made-to-order pasta. Yes. The only thing that I didn't like is that um, some of the chefs, it was, you know, kind of pre-made sandwiches. So you couldn't... Uh, you could say, like, I don't want mustard, but the everything onions and there, everything yeah. is already included. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was a really good, like, I only expected hot dogs, hamburgers. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more than just that on yeah, the buffet. Yeah, buffet was better than I was expecting. Um, I like the hot tubs and pools are open till midnight. That is very, very late. Mm -hmm. The uh, appetizers and desserts in the main dining room, both were really good. Yeah, the, the main courses, I think, were not as strong. But the appetizers and desserts, pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, gift shops were good, as you would expect with Margaritaville. Like, they do excellent merchandise if you've ever been to one of their, their restaurants. On the ship, they now have excellent merchandise. And it is probably the oldest ship that is currently running, but it looks really nice with the signage and bright paints. It looks pretty up to date with that. Yeah, we were sailing in early October, so they were doing a special event on the ship, a Oktoberfest. So they did like Stein hoisting competitions, Oktoberfest trivia. There was a craft beer contest, not a craft beer contest, a craft beer festival on board the ship. And they had like representatives from different breweries there doing giveaways. Um, I would definitely go back that time of year if they're going to do that event again. I love that. And also, uh, thumbs up to Bucko's in Freeport. It's a small bar. Their drinks were very strong, and their drinks were very cheap. Yeah. Pro probably too strong. <laughs> now, some of the downs, uh, the late night buffet. Oh, it's nice yeah. that they had something, but it's barely better than nothing. It was yeah. like... Ugly sandwiches. I would also say that they don't have free pizza. Granted, we didn't try the pizza. It smelled really good, mm -hmm. uh, but no free pizza either. No. Also, the drinks are pricey. You know, a lot of those cocktails are, are 12 or $15, and, um, you know, you do pay the gratuity after that. And unlike a lot of the other major cruise line, there is no all-you-can-drink package. Yeah. Or, you know, get your 15 drinks a day for $70 like on Carnival and Princess and that kind of thing. Also, a thing that this cruise line doesn't do is the no my time dining. You yeah. Have, if you want to eat in the main dining rooms, there's only two times. You do have to sign up uh, before you board or while you're on the ship. I think there's a place that you can go as well, but you're fixed to a certain time. Uh, also, one thing with this being an old ship, uh, the HVAC, the air conditioning, was not good, whether that be in the stateroom 
certain lounges and certain lounges you just walked into, you're like, oh, this is terrible. It's so hot in here. Now, some are pretty cool, but yes, we did bring a fan because we heard reviews about how hot the stateroom got. Bring, it, bring your own fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't get as hot of like, it, once we programmed the air conditioning down, it wasn't as hot as when we first entered, but I would bring your own fan. But some of the lounges I felt uncomfortable in. Yeah. You know, when I was having a drink, I'm like, nope, I don't want to be here anymore. Let's go somewhere else. I don't care what entertainment's in this bar or not in this bar. Let's go somewhere else. All right. And that'll do it for our time on the Margaritaville at Sea. I know a lot of the reviews are all about how this is the worst cruise ship that sails in America. And I think that is very true. You know, I've been on probably 65 cruises now. This is probably the worst ship that normally sails in America. But at the same time, it's also the cheapest ship. And it's also... A ship I had fun on. Yeah, it's kind of, you get what you pay for, know yeah. what you're going in for, know that they are going to kind of upsell you on some things, but you don't have to take it. No, and at the same time, like, you know, I'm not going to expect the same thing on this than I would paying like 10 times more to go on a Disney cruise or, you know, uh, five times more to go on a Royal Caribbean cruise. You know, I, the, you know, you don't go to McDonald's and it's like, well, my, my cheeseburger didn't taste like filet mignon. Yeah. Right. Um, so there we go. That'll do it for Margaritaville. Coming up next, I did screenshot a lot of the informational pamphlets. So like the map of the ship, the daily activities, some other important information. So stay tuned to that at the end of the video. If you got any questions about the ship, let us know in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching.
here's the bar menu at the Euphoria Lounge. Feel free to uh, pause this to get everything in more detail. Uh, my favorite drink over here, I like the watermelon wave, but the tropical hurricane is my favorite. It does talk a little bit about the drink packages on the bottom. Uh, the boat drinks are $100 and you get to 10 drinks with $12 max. No Doubts is $119 with no price limit. There's also a blender cup package. And the back of the menu with some shots. A lot of people are curious about the beer prices. There are the beer prices. I will never in my life pay $8.50 for a PBR. And there is the wine selection. Here is the five o'clock somewhere bar grill menu. Yeah. Huh? I don't know 